بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. This is day number three from the daily hadith, and uh, inshallah today I'll be reading a hadith from Abi Huraira. I'm not gonna go into like a uh, introduction for this hadith because even to introduce the hadith would it would require an explanation, and uh, the hadith itself it would explain itself inshallah. And it's a very very beautiful hadith. Well, I mean every hadith is beautiful, but you know certain there's just certain hadith that kind of like hit you harder, you know. So and, and this is one of those types of hadith because of how much advice the Prophet Sallallahu gives us in this hadith. So uh, inshallah I'll go ahead and uh, read the hadith and then we'll get to the explanation of it inshallah. So he said, أَنَا بِهُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيُ رَنُوا أَنَا نَبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ 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 ومن سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا الى الجنه ومن اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله تعالى يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم الا نزلت عليهم السكينه وغشيتهم الرحمه وحفتهم الملائكه وذكرهم الله في من عنده ومن بطع به عمله لم يسرع به نسبه رواه مسلم so this hadith is reported on the authority of Abi Huraira is in Sahih Muslim in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, مَنْ نَفَّسَ أَنْ مُؤْمِنَ قُرَبَ قُرَبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا So a qurba is أَيِّ عَمَرْ الَّذِي يَشُوكَ عَلَيْكَ You know, any, any, uh, any affair that you find a lot of difficulty in, this is called a qurba. And it, it, qurba, and uh, it, comes from, it comes from the verb uh, karaba. And uh, anything like, any amr يَشُوكَ عَلَيْكَ So it's any type of difficulties. So any, any believer, anybody that... Uh, lifts off these burdens and difficulties from another another believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve his own will relieve that person's burdens and difficulties uh from uh, from the from the from the difficulties of the day of judgment so obviously this is something that we should strive for and this is uh you know uh, from bab ta'awun ala ala birri wa taqwa that we come together and we work together to uh, enjoying what's right and what's good and uh, helping each other is from the thing that is and uh, that definitely is from that khair is from the good and it's from birr and it's from taqwa so this is something that we should all strive to do because by striving to help each other we're also helping ourselves in in that regards as long as we have ikhlas and we're doing this action for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not doing it for you know uh, for the people to praise us we're not doing this for, so the people see us but we're doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve our difficulties on the day of judgment and then he said then the prophet sallallahu said wa man yassara ala mu'sirin يسر الله يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة من من يسر يسر it means to make easy anything that's يسير or يسر is easy and I like the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said and the Deen يسر and the Deen يسر it means that the the religion has been made easy for us it's easy to understand and it's easy to act upon Allah سبحانه وتعالى has made it easy ولا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah سبحانه وتعالى does not place a burden on a person uh, hard, uh, more uh, larger or more difficult than he could bear so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made ease for us. And here it says, ala mu'asir. The mu'asir is the person that ha has taken a loan. He's borrowed money from a person. And, you know, the appointed time for him to pay the money back has come. But he's in, uh, he's still in a very, very difficult situation. And he's not able to pay the money back. So the person, uh, you know, instead of like being harsh with him and saying, no, this is my money, give me my money. He, 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 he like, takes it easy with him, you know. Okay, it's okay, Tayyib, no problem. You have difficulties, I understand. And, you know, I'll give you another two weeks or I'll give you another month. Uh, try to get the money, inshallah. And this is uh, what the Prophet ﷺ means. And that whoever does this, whoever like the person owes you money and you're, you're easy with them. You know, you're not harsh with them and you're not like, no, I want my money now. You're easy with them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be easy on that person in the, in, in the life of this world and in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him ease. You know, and we in a, in a second, and of course, this is not like a, this is a mu'asir, is a person that has an actual reason for not paying back. You know, we're not talking about a person that borrows money from you, you know, and he owes you, and in the, in the time, the appointed time comes for him to pay the money back. And you're like, where's my money? And he says, I don't have no money. I'm, I'm in difficulties, but he's got like brand new Jordans on. That's not what this hadith is talking about. This is talking about a person who is in extreme difficulties. And he has a reason, like he's really, really trying to pay the money back, but he's not capable of paying it back on time. And then that person, you should give him ease and try and try to assist him and help him to the best of his, to, uh, to the best of your capabilities. 
And whoever covers the faults and the sins of a Muslim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover his faults and his sins on the day of judgment. And the life of this world and the day of judgment. All right, and this is Armuman, and this is a, a very, very, it's general, okay? There are specific situations where you shouldn't cover the faults of certain people, especially if their faults are leading to corruption and chaos amongst the Muslims. Then those types of faults should be exposed to the people so the people can stay away from the danger of these people. If a person, for example, is committing, uh, uh, if he's known to commit uh, fornication with girls, and then, and, then, and then he's in the masjid trying to marry a Muslim sister, in this case, it's not permissible to cover up his faults because he's, it's not permissible for him until he makes Tawbah to even marry the Muslim sister from the masjid. Now, you have a sister that's praying in the masjid. She's studying in the masjid. She's trying to do good. And this guy is going around, running around with girls committing zina. This is not what the hadith is talking about. But it's talking about in general. You see the brothers that are trying to do good. We all make mistakes. We all fall, we all, we all fall into different types of mistakes and faults. And so we should do our best to cover the faults of our brothers and not to go around exposing them in front of the people. Because if we, by exposing the faults of our brother, especially for no reason, uh, you know, don't be surprised when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes your faults. So he said, uh, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is in, at the, in the assistance of the servant. And al-awn is a, to assist, to help. So as long as the, the servant is, is helping his brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be helping him. He will give him assistance in all of his affairs in the, in the life of this world and in the next, next life. And whoever seeks a path, which means to, to seek a path, to take a path, to take a path seeking knowledge. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy his pathway to get to Jannah. Okay, and, uh, and, uh, and the people, uh, whenever people come together, any of the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they come together. That they're reciting the Quran. And the tilawa is with, a, with sound. Okay, so it's not like al qiraah al qiraah can be with sound or without sound, but a tilawa is with sound. Yataluna kitab Allah, wa yatadarasunuhu baynahum. And then they're studying it between them. They're trying to understand the Quran. So, like for example, like what we do today, nowadays when we study tafsir, where we're trying to understand what, uh, what are the, what are the, what, what's the fiqh that we can take from these ayat? What's the actions that we can do? Uh, what are the actions that we can do with this? Uh, you know, how do we act upon this ayat? What's the understanding of the ayat? And how, we, how do we implement this in our lives? And this is a, a tadarus. That they sit down and they try to understand the Quran and how they can, how, how they can implement it in their lives. And not just, just recite it. So this is not talking about that they're sitting around studying tajweed. Although that is a part of it. Because recitation of the Quran correctly is, is very important. And I'm not going to take anything away from that. But the, the, but the real, that should not be, uh, we, people should not be focusing on only tajweed with, and, and not trying to actually understand the Qur'an. Because that's the most important thing. Understand how we can implement the Qur'an in our lives. إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَ A sakina is a tuma'anina. It's, it's, it's like a tranquility. It's a peace. Because that peace comes down. When you're sitting in the masjid, uh, you're sitting in the masajid, and you're sitting, uh, especially with the ulama, and you're studying Qur'an, when you're studying tafsir, you see, you, you, you find yourself at peace. وَغَشِيَتْ هُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ And the and, 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 and rahma it, it, it covers them, it incapaces them. وَحَفَّتْ هُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ the, the, the malaika, the angels, they, they, they completely surround them because they're also trying to sit in these uh, majalis of dhikr. وَذَكَرَ هُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عَنْدَ And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them, فِي مَنْ عَنْدَ And this is the malai al-a'la, you know, which is the highest congregation, the highest, uh, like a mala is, a, you know, the most noble people. And of course, the highest level uh, uh, of the malaika that are around him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَذَكَرَ هُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عَنْدَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in them. وَمَنْ بَطَعَ بِهِ عَمَلُوا لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَصَبُهُمْ And of course, uh, if, you know, whoever, whoever's actions are slow, if he's slow to act, you know, he's, he's not doing the actions, so the, he doesn't have enough actions that's going to get him in the Jannah. لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَصَبُهُ That his lineage and his ancestry is not going to help him in any regards as far as getting in the Jannah. The only thing that's going to get us in the Jannah is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we get the mercy of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by trying to trying to impl implement his book and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
وإلهنا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب